Hello everybody and welcome to the 3D printing tutorial. This is for the certification, certification one, which you're gonna do online. And for the certification, we're gonna go through the basics of what a 3D printer is and some of the key ideas that you'll need to be able to 3D print in the lab. After this, you can do the quiz and then you'll be able to apply for certification two, where you'll actually do an in-lab test, actually 3D print, and then have full access to 3D printing at the DME. So to give you some background here at the DME, we have free 3D printing for all students, okay? It doesn't have to be just for school. It can be personal projects, it can be your side hustle thing, you want a prototype, or it can be, of course, your school assignment. But either way, you can come here and you can do it. So let's get started. Okay, so first, what is a 3D printer and what am I even 3D printing? Well, you can create almost anything you can imagine with 3D printing. I have some examples. So here we have a Loki mask that I 3D printed for Halloween, right? It looks great. We also have little things like fidget spinners. You can 3D print and very funny and useless objects like this chameleon, which is 3D printed in one go. So the possibilities are endless. You can even 3D print drones, all kinds of things, all right? But how a 3D printer works is very simple. It's basically a glorified glue gun, and I'm gonna show you why. So here we have a 3D printer, and essentially you have this spool of plastic, which is like thread, melting inside this hot end, and it comes out the other end a lot thinner, and it basically draws a pattern goes a little higher, draws another pattern, and so on and so forth, until you have a 3D printed object. Now the bed, in this case, moves forward and back, the nozzle moves left and right, and up and down. So those are the three axes you need for 3D printing. Now, different printers move differently, but they will all move forward, back, left, right, up and down, AKA in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. So let's look at a 3D printer in action. Here you can see a 3D printer actually going, and let's see if we can get an angle that's like a little bit under there. So pretty cool, it's gonna keep doing layer by layer, going higher and higher until it's complete. So now, let's get back on me. All right, so, so now you got an idea of what a 3D printer is, and I told you it's simple. You need to now ask yourself, well, what am I gonna 3D print? Okay, because if you want a 3D print, you need a 3D object. And there's three ways to get a 3D object. Okay, so let's go. Way number one, you can make it yourself. And you do this using CAD or computer aided design software. There are so many CADs. Photoshop is technically a CAD. Illustrator, all these big things are CADs. So is, uh, you know, Microsoft Word, the computer aided designs if you're designing on there. But in this case, you need a 3D CAD. So uh, some ones uh, that I would recommend are Fusion, uh, SolidWorks is a good one, any Autodesk product like uh, AutoCAD, and there's so many more. But if you're just a beginner and you don't want to, you just want to get your feet wet, you don't want to get too invested, then I would recommend Tinkercad. So go on to Tinkercad.com and in five minutes, you'll be 3D designing, no time. That's way number one, make it yourself. Way number two is you can 3D scan something. In the lab, we have 3D scanners. So if you find yourself in the lab, you can 3D scan. But it is very hard to edit 3D scans. So I would not really recommend that way, but it is fun. And lastly, you have way number three, just download it from the internet. And the best place to go for that is a place called Thingiverse. So you go to thingiverse.com, you find a file that you like from a creator such as myself, who's designed it for you to use, you download it and then you're A for away. Now, regardless of how you get your 3D object, you want to make sure that you're downloading a .stl file. What does STL mean? Well, STL is a standard 3D printing file. So much like what um, MP3 is for music or what JPEG is for pictures, .stl is the standard for 3D printing. So remember, if you go through all of this, 
You'll have your 3D object, you know what a 3D printer is, and you're ready to go to phase two, where we show you exactly how to set up your print and some key ideas. So tune in for that. In this section, we're going to cover a couple of key ideas. Now, we're going to be using a software called Prusa Slicer. It's what you'll be using in future in the DME. But for now, I do not want you to pay atten much attention to the software. I want you to pay the most attention to the concepts, to the ideas. And in the next certification, we will go over the, the software in depth. So let's get started. First, let me mention that I grabbed this fidget spinner shell from Thingiverse. So much like a lot of you who are 3D printing in the lab, you might want to go into Thingiverse and grab your STL file. Remember, .stl, that's all we accept at the DME. Right, so let's get into it. The first thing is, what is 3D printing software and what is it used for? So 3D printing software is not to be confused with 3D editing software or your design CADs, right? So your CAD, your computer-aided design software. In these 3D printing softwares, you do not actually design anything. All you do is manipulate the object. So you can change the scale, right? You can change the scale uh, and you can change the orientation and you can tell the printer how to print your object. That's it. You do not edit the object. So what you do in the software is set up all these things, tell the printer what temperature to use, all these kinds of details that we're going to go through, and then you will export or slice your object, and that turns it into G-code. And G-code is instructional code. It's command line code. Printers don't recognize 3D objects, so what they do is they recognize heat up, cool down, move up, move down, move left, move right, extrude retract okay they're not that intelligent so you need command line code which will tell it line by line where to move in coordinate systems and when to heat up when to pull the filament etc to create your object so that's the first thing so you're going to see me slice a lot in this tutorial all right so now we've got this object here and as you can see i'm assuming that i'm going to be printing it exactly as you see it right here. So the first things first, this object is solid on the inside all the way to the outside. The walls are solid as well. And it will take a very long time to print a completely solid object. So that's why we have a concept called infill. Now infill tells the printer how hollow to print the solid objects. And I'll give you an example. Of course, if this was 100% and I take a piece out of this or I break it, you will see that it is solid all the way through. But what if I made it 50%? Let's make it 50%, slice it, and then we're going to look at what the printer will see. All right, so as you can see, it's still solid on the outsides. But when I go through the layers, Let's zoom in a bit here. You can see it builds a structure on the inside which has hollow parts to it. It's a grid-like system. And now the structure will change, but the idea is the same, that it'll basically create a very strong structure on the inside but leave hollow parts, which makes the time a lot less. So you'll see right now we're at 50% and it's going to take three hours to print, three hours, five minutes, okay? All right, now let's make this 20% and take a look at the difference. Slice it again. Okay, now you can see the structure on the inside is a lot less dense and now it's two hours and 47 minutes, okay? So we shaved around 15 to 20 minutes, okay, off of this print. And uh, that is still going to print well. It's going to be very strong. The object will, will not break. And oftentimes printing at 100% will make the object weaker because, as you can see, the printer prints one line at a time. So across that line, it's always going to be weak. So this is a really good thing to do to, re to reduce the infill, right? 
and your object will be very strong. So because of this, we have a maximum infill at the DME. We allow a maximum infill of 20%. Never go above 20%. On average, you'll be at 15%. Don't go below 10% and you'll be good. So that's what infill does. Now, let's look at the next concept. And this concept is called overhang. All right? What is overhang? Well, remember, when a printer is printing, it is printing a melted plastic. So it operates more like a viscous liquid. If I was to print, like, say, think about honey. Think about it printing with honey. If I was to start at the bottom here and start printing this. So for now, we might be okay. We might be okay. We might be okay. And then what happens? What happens here? Where we've got these objects hanging in midair, but the plastic is melted. It'll fall to the bed. It'll fall to the bottom. This concept is called overhang, and you can see it here in blue. It means that this object, if it does not have any support, will not print. It'll fall. All right? So what do we do? We create temporary supports that will allow the object to print, and then we remove it after we've printed. So you can see here we have supports. All we, go, all we do is we say, Go to supports and everywhere. So everywhere will create supports everywhere where there's overhang. You can see it. there's overhang here at the top of these circles. And that's about it. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, that's about it here. So let's slice it and we'll see what this looks like. Okay. So you can see in green the supports. All right. Now let's actually look through the file here. And you can see that the supports are built differently than the object. And the object, the supports are very thin, you can see. The object is building on top of the supports with a little bit of a layer, that darker green layer in between the support and the object. This allows it to be removed very easily. Okay, so everywhere builds supports everywhere where there is overhang. All right, so what are these other features? Now, you don't really need to concern yourself with this feature, but supports... For build plate only is another concept you should probably understand. So what is build plate only? Well, this plate at the bottom here that your print is printing on is called the build plate. So when you say supports on build plate only, it means supports that are generated where the bottom of the support touches the build plate and the top will touch the object. So let's look at this. Okay, so you can see here that the support's only generated where the bottom touched the build plate and it goes straight to the object, but it will not generate supports on the inside here where the bottom of the support would have to touch the object and then the top would have to touch the object again. So you can see because the object is slightly slanted in a straight, if you make a straight line from the build plate, it will go a little bit on the inside there. And so that's what it did. Now, this is useful in this case where you might get away with printing these circles without supports, but you will not get away with printing this lip here without supports. Okay, so that's the difference between build plate only and everywhere. Now, let's move on to the next concept. Okay, so we've done infill. We're going to leave that there. I'm taking supports off. Now, this object has only a small piece of the object touching the bed. Okay, so it'll be very prone to tipping over. All right, now let's make this a little bit straighter here. Okay. All right, so it'll be very prone to tipping over. And we do not want that, right? So what do we do? Well, there's only a very tiny, tiny, tiny portion that's actually touching the bed. So we're going we're gonna to increase the area of the object touching the bed by adding a brim. And a brim is just a single layer of material, of plastic, that will then touch the bed and touch your object. Let's look at it. Okay, 
So you see this very, very tiny single layer of material there. Let's look, let's, let's, let's scale this down a bit. There you go. So this orange part is the object the green part is the brim. If you were to try and print this object without the brim, this little portion would not even stick to the bed of the printer, but with the brim, it'll definitely generate and it'll make it more stable. Now, this brim is not stable enough to support an object like this, but oftentimes you'll use a brim to help an object stick to the bed, right? So because this is clearly not the correct way to print this object, what are we to do? Well, let's talk about orientation for a second. So right now with no supports and a brim, this object will take two hours and 45 minutes. So let's remove the brim. Now, how you print something is equally as important as all these other settings. In this case, when you want to orient an object, what you're actually trying to do is minimize the overhang, okay? Because when you minimize overhang, you minimize the amount of supports needed, and therefore you really drastically reduce the time of the print. And you want to minimize the height. So the perfect way to orient this is flat, perfectly flat if you can. Okay, now I'm just going to make this perfectly flat. There we go. So let's slice this. Now I'm going to actually put supports everywhere, right? Which means if there is overhang, it'll attempt to generate supports. And let's slice it. Okay, look at the time. One and a half hours, basically. Okay, we shaved off several hours of print time. Now, we even have supports on everywhere, but look, no supports have been generated because there is no overhang. This is the optimal way to print your object. And so when you are doing this at home, after you go through this certification and the next, orientation is going to be the main factor in how fast your object prints and also if your object prints successfully. So with this laying flat, it is more likely to print successfully. There'll be less mistakes. We've got more area touching the build plate, so it'll stick properly. And you should have a working fidget spinner by the end of it. So after this, you will just export G code, and then you would upload your G code and submit it to the DME for review after you've been fully certified. And then we will let you know when you can come in to print. So. Next, we're going to talk about safety and rules. Okay, so if you've made it this far, you are committed and you're almost done. But before we end this, we need to go through a couple of rules and safety. So let's start with the safety. I'm going to read a couple of these uh, safety tips and make notes, okay? So first of all, in no particular order, never, ever, ever touch the hot end of the printer. Why? We 3D prints with a plastic cold PLA, which means most of the time we're 3D printing at 210 degrees Celsius. Boiling water is 100 degrees, which means if you've ever been burnt by coffee, this is more than twice as hot. So never touch it. Number two, keep your hair and your clothes away from the printer. It has a lot of moving parts and anything can get caught, okay? Also, keep the printer as clean as you found it. That's just, you know, common courtesy. All right, now, what do you do if a print fails? Well, what is a print failing? What does that look like? If you are trying to print this cat that looks like this, okay? And what ends up coming out is something that does not look like what you are trying to print, your print failed, okay? The rule is, if you think it's failing, it probably is. So, if your print is failing, immediately stop the print. We'll show you how to do that. And then call for help. Now, if there's a more serious matter, maybe there's some grinding noises, some smoke, God forbid, a fire, immediately turn off the printer and call for help. Okay, so those are the basic rules. Now, uh, sorry, those are the basic safety tips. Now let's go into the rules. 
First, let's start with the concept, which you're going to need to know when you say, how much can I 3D print? So we have a cap of 12 hours that you can be approved to print for. So how it will work is after you've successfully completed this test, and then you've su successfully completed the next one, you'll have access to book 3D printing time. And we will only approve a maximum of 12 hours, but it's a rolling credit, which means if you say uh, have four hours approved, you'll, hold, you'll only have eight hours available, right, of your approved time. As soon as you come in and finish your four hour print, you'll have 12 hours again and so on and so forth. So it's a rolling credit. You basically have to complete your bookings to get the time back, okay? So if you say, well, what's the maximum size I can print? It's actually six hours worth, okay? You can only submit a maximum of six hours uh, for a single print, which will usually limit the size of the print anyway. So you don't really have to worry about the size of the print, okay? Now, when you show up for your 3D printing booking, you have to show up within the first 15 minutes. If you're even a second late, the system will mark you as late and you will forfeit your booking. So always be on time, all right? Because there's nothing we can do, the system's automatic. Now, when you've, been, when you've come into the lab on time and you signed in, when you start printing, from the second you start printing, you have to stay in the lab for 20 minutes because most of prints will fail in the first 20 minutes. After that, you're free to go. You can come pick up your print uh, on another day or on a later time the same day. We will inform you when, you when your print is complete and uh, you know, you'll know you let us know via email when you're gonna come pick it up. All right, and last but not least, you can print anything you want with the exception of these things. No weapons, no phone cases, no marijuana paraphernalia, and of course, nothing you're going to sell, all right? And no offensive material, and that's to our discretion. Now, if you fail to follow these rules and safety measures, we have a three-strike system which means for any offense, we can give you up to three strikes. At, at the three strike mark, you can either face suspension or you'll have to reapply through this whole thing and get recertified. So now that we've completed the tutorial, feel free to go to the quiz link in the description, do your quiz, best of luck, and we'll see you for the second tutorial on how to do your second test effectively. All right, goodbye.